For ripple whips to be most effective, you want to choose shots that share some common properties, such as a similar sky, grass, a black area, a white area, water, something that looks similar between the shots. So for example, for these two travel shots, I have a nice blue sky with puffy clouds in this shot and a similar sky in this shot. So these are good candidates. Now you need to make sure that you have enough handles or extra media for the transition. If I double click at this edit point, you can see the extra media available on each of these clips. I'll double click again. So this edit point selected, I'm gonna to go to my pan set of ripple whips that will move the camera up, down, left, or right. Now I wanna take the second clip and make its clouds overlap with the clouds of the first clip. So I'm gonna use up and flip to do that. And if I play that back, we already have a very effective transition, but let's look at how we can make it a little bit better. I'll move my play to the middle and select it. In the transition inspector, at the very top, we have the setup and action menu. By default, it's set to action, which is what we see when it plays. But we can choose to adjust the framing or move the clip in the mask. Let's start with the framing. This gives us a view of both clips and how they're aligned to each other. So now we can see they exactly match the thumbnail, where the B clip, the second clip, is upside down on top of the first clip. And we have frames that identify how the camera moves. So with the first move, let's have the camera move and come in a little bit more on this little horse and buggy here. And for the second move, it looks pretty good right there. You can also choose to rotate these frames to create a little more drama. I'll undo that. And in the inspector, you can scale either one of these to push in tighter or stay wider. You can also adjust their position using the parameters here in the inspector. I'll select the action and play that back. So now we're able to focus on exactly what we want in each shot. Another option we have is for moving the clip and the mask. Here, I have full control over where this B clip ends up. So I can place it anywhere in relationship to the A clip. I like it pretty much where it is, but I can also adjust the mask and where it is, and I can rotate it. For instance, if I wanted these to be matched over here, I could move everything over here. But I'd have to move in very close to have this kind of transition. So most of the time, it's best to have these clips either right on top of each other or right beside each other. One thing I frequently like to do is adjust the feather amount. So in the inspector, you can crank up the feather amount to create more overlap. Eventually, you'll start to reveal the edge of this clip here, but then you can go to the clip position and move it in Y in order to create more overlap between the clips. Depending on the content, you can overlap them much more or not as much. Some color correction can go a long way to helping the transition between the shots look more seamless. To do so, what I like to do is deselect the transition. When the playhead is to the left of the center of the transition, we're over the outgoing clip. I'll press Command-6 to apply the color corrector effect for that outgoing clip. And in exposure, I'm gonna bring down the shadows a little bit and even bring the midtones down a little bit. And then in saturation, I'm gonna increase the saturation in the midtones to make the sky blend together a little better. Then I'll move my playhead to the other side of the center and now I'll be working on the incoming clip right here. In this case, I wanna bring the saturation down of the sky a little bit to get a little bit of a better match. And I might try to brighten it up a little bit as well. So by deselecting the transition, it's very easy to move back and forth between the corrections on each of the clips to make the match better. Here's an example of two shots that have a similar hue. And I wanna move from this shot to this shot and because all the sky is on the right, and we've got sky on the left here, I'm gonna use the pan version that goes to the right. Not bad, but I'd like to make this transition more seamless. So with the playhead in the middle, I'll select it, get out of the color board. I'm gonna go straight to my mask feather and crank that way up 
and that reveals the edge of this incoming clip, but I'll take the clip position in X this time and just slide that over to make it disappear. And we get a much smoother transition between the two clips. Of course, they're overlapping much more. So when I go back to my framing, I need to make sure my frames don't overlap this seam here. While I'm in this view, I can adjust it further. I'll increase the feather even a little more and I'll move over the clip position in X a little bit more. While I'm here, I'll adjust the framing a little bit. And let's see what that looks like. High resolution photographs are great candidates for whips, especially panoramas. Here I have a panorama shot with an iPhone and here I have another picture that's not a panorama. Since the skies are somewhat similar, I'm gonna to try to use this up and flip. So I'll select the edit point, I'll double click, up and flip to apply it, and let's play that back. So obviously by default it doesn't look very good because both of these photographs have black areas around them. One way to handle that is to select everything. So I've selected both clips and the transition. The reason I like to do this is because no matter where my playhead is, I can go to the video or to the transition and get access to those parameters. So for instance, if I select the video clips, even though my playhead is over the transition, I have the option to change the spatial conform for both of those photographs at the same time to fill. And all of a sudden I have a nice blend between the two. And that's a really great option. However, here's another idea. I'm gonna press Command Z to undo that. And instead, with a playhead over this first clip, I'm gonna click the Crop tool and choose Ken Burns. By doing so, I'll create movement on the photograph before the transition starts. So I don't need this much movement, but let's say I'll start about here and end around here. Then I'll go over to my second clip and select Ken Burns, and I'll use this default. I'll start right about there. I'll click Done, and now I have movement on each of those clips leading through the transition and movement coming out of it as well. So two ideas on how to work with stills with ripple whips. Clear blue skies can be especially problematic. Here I have two photos that I'd like to join with ripple whips. I'll select the edit point and use up and flip. And if we move through it, we'll see right away that we have an issue. I'll select all of these Make sure the video inspector is selected and choose fill to make sure we don't have any black areas. And I'll select the transition and go to my framing and adjust my framing a little bit. But I still have this issue here. For shots like this, you can choose to add clouds. So for the cloud pattern, we've got several different clouds to choose from. There's a warning that you should make the transition cover the entire clips because the clouds will suddenly pop on if you don't. So what I'd like to do is drag the transition out to make it longer or shorten the clips. So when you're using clouds, it's key to make the transition last the entire duration. With that done, you can try out the different cloud patterns to find something that you like. There's a lot of different options here. Once you've chosen a pattern, you can adjust the scale of the clouds and the position. Let's look at that in the action view. Make sure it does a pretty good job of covering the seam here, but also not getting in the way of our subjects. And I can adjust them left and right, and I can adjust them up and down a little bit. And let's play that back. Some clips just don't lend themselves very well to a good transition, so we've got some other options. So with these two clips here that are obviously very different, I'll select the edit point and apply the right whip to it 
And as we move between them, we see a very obvious transition. In fact, we can even see a little bit of that edge there. So let's go ahead and adjust the clip position to blend those more together. But still, this doesn't look that good. So for that, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we have a couple options. One is that we can choose to blur everything. That way we can move into the transition and blur through it and come back out of it. And you've got some options for how quickly that blur happens. And the other is a flash to white. I'll turn off the blur and I'll click on flash to white. And both these are meant to hide that transition as we move from one to the next. With a flash to white in particular, you might want to make that transition a lot shorter in order to cover that transition. Flash to white also has a couple of speed options.